very problematic and uh, mahatma gandhi has got a lot to say about this and then we have also a modern day society which is also very intolerant it has become intolerant with uh, growing times and in some way this intolerance is uh, affecting the, our entire countries and our entire international system uh, if you find that um, it's like you know you are for us or you are against us it's that type of a situation we think very often in terms of binaries and uh, it is a binaries that define our relationship our our belief systems that we have and uh, so my way or highway this is the thing that uh, you know very often is being uh, resorted to either you you know in a way agree with me uh, even you know the, the the agreement to disagree is not there which again mahatma gandhi has got a lot to say uh, because he is a person who is very very deeply related to the very conflict resolution uh, you can say studies i mean to say he is one person which whom we study because i did a course on court peace and conflict studies and mahatma gandhi has has been considered to be very very relevant for this conflict studies and then we have also a situation where there is a so to say a very very high rise of especially in india you have uh, there is a lack of spiritualism some of them say that no no we are you know having so much of pujas we have so much of worshiping going on all around how can we say that there is lack of spiritualism but i would say that you know that is more uh, designed as you know ritualism so ritualism has been taken over spiritualism and gandhi was a very very deeply deeply religious person of course he is a person who used to say that i am a hindu i am a very devout and pure hindu and that is the reason why i am also a very devout muslim and i am also a very devout christian that is what he said that means he tried to say that you know if you are spiritually you know you are connected to a religion then you cannot be actually antagonist to another religion that is what he precisely perhaps tried to say and then we we live in very troubled times so we all all know that and this society is also marked by extreme economic inequality so you have very rich people and rich people they are going richer and the poor people are going poorer so this is one of the high you can say maybe this is the outcome of the development paradigm that we have where there is wealth getting concentrated in in the hands of a few and there is more and more accumulation by way of dispossession so a, a a section of the society is getting dispossessed and whereas the wealth is getting accumulated by uh, at another end by the very rich so there is this is something and in india we have also a very large issue huge issue of unemployment and there is uh, this unemployment uh, is you can say uh, can be very well caused by even during the pandemic situation when we found a huge number of uh, migrant workers going home and then uh, there are conflicts conflicts uh, there are caste conflicts there are communal conflicts conflicts both at individual and group level and so uh, this is another you can say thing we are having especially uh, i i i won't say that is happening all in india in many other countries of the world whether it is communal conflict or conflict of a Uh, past as in india it's happening and we are uh, today holding this uh, very important uh, 158 uh, birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi under circumstances when there are uh, very very serious issues i would say not serious i'd say it's very very uh, uh, in a way outrageous type of you know happenings crimes against women happening especially in the uh, up that you i think you all know that you know the the paper is full of newspapers it's full of the news which is happening there and then there is also the unbridled consumerism which is rampant and which is very uh, you can say for all to see and uh, last but not the least or you can say there are many issues which we can go on talking but i won't go on i can't uh, you know keep you uh, bore you with all these you know problems of modern society but one one problem which actually besets us is the problem of environmental crisis 
which is a very real threat to our, uh, you know, whether we are, uh, you know, identity, you know, from the point of view of identity, we may, we may not be the same, but I think this is one problem which besets us all as the humans. So basically, what we find is that uh, the type of issues, the type of contradictions, which uh, are there in the in the world today, uh, I keep on saying this that you know to simplify matters because it's a very complex world. To simplify matters, we can say that uh, you know these contradictions are mainly between uh, humans and humans. That is one set of contradiction. And when we talk of humans versus humans contradiction, uh, we can include the conflicts that we have between groups of people, one group of people against another, one individual against another. So these matters are there. And then there are also, there is also the other contradiction, which is between the human beings on one side and the environment on the other side. So I would say that these are the two main contradictions that we have. And Mahatma Gandhi has got a lot to say about this. And, uh, and therefore, actually, understanding Mahatma Gandhi is very important. Uh, to know this person, especially for the students. Uh, I think uh, we we study Mahatma Gandhi only as a freedom fighter, as a father of the nation. And uh, of course, uh, why he is called the father of the nation and what is the nation that he talked of often gets, you know, uh, overlooked. There, I, I, I ask this questions, question to my students also, that why is he called the father of the nation? What's the reason? And sometimes uh, students find it very difficult to answer because uh, uh, even Mahatma Gandhi, uh, because you see, it's, it's through his movement that he created this, this nation. The Indian national movement is the Indian freedom struggle. We have to understand that. It's a nation in the making. And a nation that he actually dreamt of, the nation that he wanted to be inclusive because India was not a singular entity. India was divided into, you know, many states, many people, each with their own culture. It's a very, very, uh, it's called a cultural dome. You can say it's a multitude of cultures, multitude of, you know, people at different stages of their civilization. And so this very, very complex uh, country was brought together by Bapu, or as we lovingly call him, the father of the nation as he tried to bring under one umbrella the different strands of movement in the country. So for, I mean to say from the mainstream, from the center to the, to the coast, to northeast, he carried it everywhere. And he is a, he is a politician also, he is a master strategist who freed India from the British yoke. And he, and he was a social reformer. He tried to work for the Harijan uplift, uh, upliftment and then uh, he was a journalist and writer, a person who believed in truth, as is to be told. Why I am saying all of this is because we have to reflect upon it. What is happening to the world of journalism today? Where is truth? Because we, we live in an era of post-truth. So that is why if you go on you know, speaking on Gandhi, you will find that he is more and more uh, relevant to us. He was a social reformer, as I said, Harijan upliftment. Where, is the, where are the Harijans today? Uh, why there is still, you know, so much of so rampant, you know, past conflict there. And he was a prophet in many ways because a lot of the things that he said, they proved prophetic and uh, they have been realized uh, in, the, in the days that went by. And he was an educationist. He told a lot about education and the new, new education policy 2020, the national education policy that has recently been enunciated by the government of India. Uh, if you go through the, if you go through what is there, the very, very high ideals that are being actually incorporated in the policy, and if you go through Mahatma Gandhi's own writings on the education system, you will find that actually what Mahatma Gandhi desired was the same as what the NEP 2020 desires. So he was prophetic and he was very, very realistic and he had a lot to say about education. Maybe if I find time, I will spell out a few of that. And then he was an environmentalist. Now, a person who actually was killed in 1948, uh, how can how can he be considered an environmentalist? Because 
the environmental movement that we talk to today, the environmentalist, the environmentalism that we actually speak of, actually they came much, much later. The environmental crisis was actually, in a way, uh, it was first, uh, first you can say, the conscience of USA was United States of America was shaken by that book by Russell Carson, The Silent Spring. And that is where we, we end the wilderness movement there. So it is actually after Mahatma Gandhi's demise that, you know, uh, that lot of this after his assassination, that the actual environmental movement that we talk of, they emerge. But then if you go through his writings, you will realize that he was an environmentalist and what he said, uh, what he believed in and what he wanted the people to do, they are as relevant today as as you can say in any any time so you know gandhi's relevance also lies in that in the fact that we can consider him to be also a measuring rod whether it is in, in our individual day to day affairs whether it is in the um, you know affairs as managed by the state in every, in every parlance you can say gandhi can be a, a measuring rod the, the country that he dreamt of, the country that he fought, the struggle for independence, is it the country that we have after 70 years? So these are the issues. But he is relevant for many, many ways. I will just try to uh, summarize the things under the two uh, contradictions that I talked of. That is the humans versus humans type of contradiction that we have, which is uh, quite evident from the from the uh, struggles going on between countries and countries, between people and people, and between you can say uh, leaders between, and the politics that we are having today. He is a person. Mahatma Gandhi was a person uh, who actually, uh, as I say, for conflict resolution, he did a lot of things. He is a person who said that you have to talk with your enemy. You have to talk to the people who does not actually uh, believe in what you believe in. So, in a way, he was actually a person who tried to have a dialogue, who tried to come to a consensus, who tried to resolve a conflict. And that is the reason why he is a person who is accepted all over the world. He is a person who was accepted both to both the parties normally. Even in, in, in India, he was the bridge. He was the bridge which connected both the Muslim League and the Indian National Congress. So it, persons from both the you know factions, from both the parties used to talk to him. And he is a person who actually uh, kept on, kept on uh, you can say, a, a dialogue mode. Even some of his writings reflect that. There is a dialogue actually in which he is always interested. And he respects the other person's view always. The respecting the, you know, and and that is where, uh, you know, the the type of inclusive India that he could see actually emanates from there. Because his idea of a India was celebrating its diversity in its various forms, not only in terms of religion, where you have the two major religions, which is said that they are very essential that these two communities must live together in harmony. And he said that they are the eyes of India, in a way, uh, you know, he, he agreed to that. You know that they are the eyes of India, the Hindus and the Muslims, and then uh, this um, connecting people, bringing all the people together. Actually, it is uh, for his, you can say, methodology of you know dialogue of of uh, talking to the other person of uh, you can say accommodating. And that is the reason why the different struggles in India could be united under the umbrella. And this Indian national movement became such a movement, such a mass movement. And so what I'm trying to say is that he is a person who tried to resolve many of the differences between people and people type of situation and how uh, they can be brought together. But you see today's world, it is, there is very less of dialogue. The opposition is not taken care of. Opposition is actually unlike Gandhi. Gandhi always respected the op opposition. Gandhi always listened to the opposition. 
but in today's world the opposition is sought to be uh, destroyed in a way annihilated in a way in lot of ways so uh, you find that uh, if you talk uh, in usa in russia in germany in turkey even in our country there is a sense of having a sort of dictatorial type of uh, governance a dictatorial type of situation where as if there is no uh, there, the diversity is lost and there is one color one paint which is all over one personality which actually sub 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 you can say subsumes all the other type of different uh, categories which are there so this is something very important to, to understand and his relevance you know truth without truth without non violence you know you cannot go forward actually you can have a world of chaos you can and and we are seeing what is happening today and you have also something he always believed in that there is he talked of morality in politics he talked of morality in politics without morality politics will be actually will not be a true politics and what we are having today is you know it is all for power power politics is there there is no idealism there is no you know values which are attached to uh, good politics so morality in politics also is also quite lost so uh, in different ways you know these contradictions that we see uh, gandhi has a lot to offer and and his his you can say weapons of truth and non violence they have actually served the world in lot of ways you know inspiration he has been an inspiration all throughout the world from uh, lake wellesa in poland to martin luther king in usa to you can say in south africa the apartheid movement uh, anti apartheid movement under nelson mandela all these has been inspired by gandhi and even in india a lot of movements especially the environmental movements like the narmada bachao andolan or even in assam we have the lower subansri and the lower subansri hydel project movement all these are actually inspired by gandhi's you know philosophy and gandhi's uh, mode of struggle of satyagraha the you know the satya and agraha that means the 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 very Uh, the love for truth you can say the deep respect and love for truth the agro is desire the desire for truth so this is very important this is very important and this will never go away actually this will remain and all throughout the world and even in india though sometimes they don't get the uh, you know the type of respect they deserve but all this gandhian mode of struggle uh, has remained the only alt- alternative left to the people to vent their grievances to demand something or to you can say fight against injustice this is something that will remain because this is one tool which the poor can resort to the weak can resort to otherwise it is not possible for for the poor to take up arms all the time as has happened earlier because there were only only the only way the only way of resolving a conflict earlier prior to mahatma gandhi was either either you actually accept the other person's view you bow down on, to him or you take arms and you know you fight him and fight him for maybe elimination so this very very important you know the mode of struggle will remain it is relevant today and i think it is going to be relevant in days to come it will be relevant because the passive resistance that it talked of is something very very essential and then uh even his views on democracy you know these are very relevant today we talk of a world uh, we we are having a democracy uh, which is confined more or less to only electoral democracy but gandhi's views on democracy was uh, quite wide and one of the very basic thing that he said was that uh, that we cannot be intolerant in a democracy but today it seems as if intolerance is the you can say the buzzword of democracy the democracy is being actually in a way pervertedly used to to uh, bulldoze dissent 
and this intolerance actually uh, you know it 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 destroys the faith in democracy. That is what is said. So this is very important for us all to understand because if we go keep on doing that, uh, we know where we are going. We are going to the not to the right in the right path, as Gandhi said. Then there are actually so, so many things that can be said about him. Uh, I am limiting uh, it to also the other uh, few other aspects, like Mahatma Gandhi. He stressed a lot upon. It's not that he was not individualistic. He's, he, uh, you know, emphasized a lot on uh, uplifting oneself. Actually, the struggle within oneself is very, very important for the students. Therefore, it is essential that in this world of consumerism, in this world of, uh, you can say, one-upmanship, in this world of extreme competition, I think Gandhi is something which can inspire us in a lot of ways. And one of the ways of inspiration is also to, to look, you know, within oneself and develop oneself in a way, spiritually, morally, which is, I think he, he laid a lot of emphasis on the moral development. So morality is very, very important in all aspects of life. And, uh, and he said, my life is, is my message, actually. He lived a life where you can say, it is very, he's a minimalist. He used the most minimum things that he actually required. He's a person whose carbon foot footprint, if we calculate today, will be much, much lesser than many of us. He's a person who, uh, who was a saint in a lot of ways and uh, who sacrificed a lot, who was ready to sacrifice at any moment for the people. So, what I'm trying to say, especially for the students, is that you have to uh, not only study Gandhi, but Gandhi's, you know, his spiritualism. I'm not talking in terms of religious, you know, uh, matter. He was a deeply religious person, no doubt. But, you know, developing one's morality and character building was so essential for building up a, you know, a desired uh, nation. A nation of uh, with that he dreamt of, you know, character building is something that he emphasized upon, and it is character uh, that our students should build up. And if you have that character that Mahatma Gandhi taught, then you will not be a consumerist. You will not be a person who will not, uh, you know, respect other views. You will not be a person who will be. Uh, a person with a one-dimensional thought because he was very, very pluralistic in character. And we all know Mahatma Gandhi was, uh, uh, when he became a uh, member of the Indian National Congress, after that he reorganized the, organi the, the Indian National Congress. And there were you know, local bodies, for example, the Pradesh Congress committees. They all came up after Mahatma Gandhi came. Now, one thing, if a person wanted to become a member of Indian National Congress at that point of time, they were to pay a small fee, very nominal fee, and then they will have to agree to two principles. One principle was Ahimsa, that they will never resort to violence. And the second principle was believing in Hindu-Muslim unity. That was uh, you know, apparently it talked of two religion, but actually it talked of the pluralism of the diversity, respecting the diversity of the country. So we all know that uh, during the time of partition, Mahatma Gandhi was actually uh, not happy. And he was actually busy uh, trying to quell the different uh, communal riots which were happening. And he wanted a united India, actually. He wanted a united India, but that did not happen. That did not happen. Uh, that, is a, that is a different you know, trajectory that uh, the country took. But the point is, he is a person who wanted this inclusiveness. And his inclusiveness was reflected in our constitution. And it is that constitution uh, that actually paved India's path to uh, development later on. Uh, in all of this, 
his love for uh, or you can say accommodating the diversity celebrating diversity was very central to to the entire you can say uh, process of nation making in india and today in our country if we have destroy if we are destroying something we are destroying that essence of inclusiveness that essence of pluralism it is so avidly so you can say passionately espoused we cannot have a country strong enough without that inclusive character there is some warning actually in some parts of his writing that if we don't do that india may get disintegrated or it will not remain the same and we don't know what will happen in the future but it's true that india cannot be if you are you know talking of mahatma gandhi you cannot have a country of a single religion or of a single people it cannot be it has to be a very very pluralistic type of society anyway this is uh, happening in india no doubt i am talking about india but it is also happening in the echoes of it or you can say some parallels can also be seen in other parts of the world where the opposition or you can say the diversity is not being tolerated so tolerating diversity is very very important and students and we ourselves we have to actually have to keep that uh, you know spirit of tolerance in us that is very very essential to the contemporary world to the present day world to the modern world so to say to survive then uh, you see there are so many issues which can uh, which can be talked about but one thing connected to this because i have actually touched upon what the students should do is that <clears throat> mahatma gandhi uh, you can think that he was always a compromiser did he compromise always was he a person who you know to be a gandhian you have to compromise there is a saying that you know if you believe in you know gandhi if 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 someone slaps you on one cheek you put the other you know for the other to you know as if you know uh, you don't have you don't resist it so actually that is not the case uh, non violence and truth they are accord as mahatma gandhi said it's a weapon of the strong it is not a weapon of the weak it takes courage to face lathis and to withstand that so we have also to understand that mahatma gandhi is a person who stood against injustice whether it is in india or in south africa where he first started started the struggle when he was thrown out of the train it is not that he was the first indian to be thrown out of the train there 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 were people in south africa living from you know much longer than you know gandhi just went there for one year on a contract there were people indians living there for such a long period of time facing all this injustice discrimination nobody did anything but mahatma gandhi saw it and seeing that he did not stay silent that is very important so to be a gandhian is not to be you know very passive and not, not do anything let things be as it is it's not that it is actually being very active and very actively you can say opposing the injustices which was meted out and he did it he did it he did it uh you know with a moral force which is very important he did it with a moral force and after you know south african experiment he came to india and he applied the same in in, in the indian context so morality and the moral force is central to it and today in today's modern society if something is lacking or we have lost is that moral force so morality in politics morality in day to day you can say interactions in transactions it's no longer there uh even uh, and he and he was a very practical person you have to also understand that i have stated about you know the gulf between the rich and the poor the extreme economic inequality which is there in the modern day world what mahatma gandhi said was that you know he wanted indian you know capitalists or you can say persons the wealthy persons to have a sort of trusteeship 
to have trust to develop these people. He he was a person who actually encouraged the cooperative movement. There must be cooperation among people. So for upliftment also, you know, whether you know it is a uh, it is a situation when there is some accumulation by uh, by few, or in a in a situation when there there, there are people coming together for uh, you know together for production. He had an actually solution. He has a solution where you know the contradictions are to some extent taken care of. In cooperatives, people work together. They have a sense of you know camaraderie, and in trusteeship, there is a trust actually, which is central to the entire discourse, to the entire you can, you can say scheme of things. And then uh, uh, coming to the, I'll just end up by you know stating about this the other contradiction uh, that is you can say human and environment contradiction. He talked a lot, lot of things about uh, uh, in his Hind Swaraj and in in Young India and Horizon, where he wrote, wrote profusely. He talked about a lot of things about what the civilization would be like. There is there is a civilizational debate actually, where Mahatma Gandhi tries to say that India must not become like England because England was at that time they were the mother country. They had colonized us. And India was developing on the lines of Britain, but he was all the time critiquing and he was saying that, you know, we shouldn't be like them. He said that God forbid that India should ever take to industrialization after the manner of the West. Now, what is, I'm just quoting this. God forbid that India should ever take to industrialization after the manner of the West. Why I'm saying it is important is that it is he's not saying that we should not take to industrialization. He's not saying we are not, uh, you know, because again, there is a lot of misconception about that, that Gandhi is against industrialization. No, he was not against industrialization. He was against industrialization after the manner of the West, you know, the type of industrialism, you know, big industries, you know, uh, where you know there is a lot of division of labor, huge amount of production, which will you know later lead to huge amount of consumption, or you can say in a way forced consumption. The consumption is thrust upon the people in different ways. So uh, this economic imperialism, actually, which was resorted to and he, which he pointed out uh, by a single island kingdom, island kingdom that is England. In England was so small. India was so big. So he was, Mahatma Gandhi was saying that the economic imperialism of a single tiny island kingdom, England, is today keeping the world in chains. Not only India, there were so many other countries which have been actually colonized by uh, England. He was trying to say that if India, if we, because at that point of time, our population was around 30 crores. So, he was saying that if an entire nation of 300 million took to similar type of exploitation, it would strip the world bare like locust. You know, we will eat up everything. And uh, what will happen is that he also later on, in another of his writing, he said that we will not be having colonies or places where we can colonize. And if we are not able to colonize, what will we do? We will end up exploiting our own people, our own marginalized, uh, you know, and that this is happening. We are, you know, uh, in, in central India, the mines, in, even in Assam, we are having a lot of problems about uh, mining in some forest areas like, you know, rainforest, very rich, eco, eco, ecologically sensitive, very biodiverse area. They are being, you know, exploited. For what? for this type of development paradigm. So he talked that, you know, this civilizational debate that he said that that type of industrialization is bad. It is bad for the country and we shouldn't go take that. Then he also was, you know, trying to lead a life, very frugal life, trying to himself project as a sort of uh, model for others to follow. He believed in waste recycling. He, he adopted those measures in his ashrams. He is a person who used to write letters 
on the back of envelopes. He used to cut and open the envelopes, and on the back side of it, he used to write write his notes. He was a person who actually recycled in a lot of ways. So these the ashrams which were set up, they were they were sought to be made up into very very sustainable type of enterprises. So, uh, so he was giving a model that way, and he was also uh, a person who criticized uh, the the model. I have already said that they, he criticized the Western model of development because, according to him, the Western model of development, the, that civilizational paradigm, it leads to multiplicity of the ones, the needs are you know are there for people but now the greed takes over and it leads to more and more want so whereas ancient civilizations they were marked by an a restriction upon wants what happens is that in this modern era you try to wet up the greed you try to wet up the wants okay luxury becomes a necessity tomorrow so this is very popular we all know that so therefore, Gandhi was wholeheartedly detesting this mad desire, the mad desire to destroy distance and time. So you can fly to you know one end of the art and then go back to another. So he was not for that. And the animal appetite, which was being you know all the time. So so there is a you know sort of hunger in the Western civilization. There is a sort of hunger in the Western civilization which actually is fueled by the very development paradigm that they have and which Gandhi was contesting in different ways. He is giving alternatives one and he himself was trying to be an alternative by leading a life, simple living, high thinking uh, and which is very, very, you know, uh, environment friendly in a way. So that Western civilization, Mahatma Gandhi said, was satanic. And today, in the time of pandemic, we are having pandemic, we all know that in a very, very bad situation. And this, all these epidemic and these pandemics, if you go in history, if you go back and if you look, you will find that when did these pandemics emerge? Pandemics emerge when actually human beings started building cities, when they started their trade and commerce, when the people, they, they started the wars in a big way, when one country went a long way to fight another country. They carried the pathogens with them. They carried the pathogens with them. They globalized this, you know, the different diseases that were carried. And if you go through the history of pandemics, you will find that civilizations like that, the civilization of the Incas in South America, they were destroyed by this human, you can say, contact. When when the Spanish people they went to uh, colonize them in South America, the Incas, they were obliterated. That was not a direct biological warfare in the form that, you know, it was uh, put upon them. But what has happened is over a period of time, after the agricultural revolution, especially when people started to have more and more, uh, you know, uh, to produce more and more, and then to accumulate more and more, to have, you know, uh, to eat uh, more and more, to have you know animals with them more and more domestication and then the ecology getting destroyed what is pandemic it is caused by virus or any you can say microbe the microbial world which has actually jumped into the human chain because of our own activities our own activities so you will find that you know in in the world that Mahatma Gandhi dreamt of perhaps there would not have been the type of pandemics that we are having today, that we are witnessing today. So very briefly, also, he was against urbanization. We today all know that the cities, they are eating up the village in a way. He said, Mahatma Gandhi said, that the blood of the village is the cement with which the edifice of the cities are built. The cities are built with the blood of the, that is the cement. The cement of the cities, they are the blood of the villages that is what he said so it is not that he only goes on criticizing or you can say you know finding out the loopholes he was also a person who gave up or who gave lot of solutions as well 
he gave the ideal he talked of gram swaraj which is very very important india before the british came was not dependent on any other people in the world other parts of the world were dependent or were becoming dependent on india and that is the reason why the europeans came to india why the other people came to india and what was india india real india as mahatma gandhi rightly said lived in the villages and he wanted to build up india a self reliant today we are talking of atmanirbhar bharat but india was atmanirbhar before the british came and this local self reliance you know is something that mahatma gandhi really emphasized on i have already talked about pandemic i just wanted to i just want to add one point to that he talked of cleanliness you know swachh bharat abhiyan we all are having you know that and you know that is part of you know part of the vision that he had of india and of also the villages that they should be very clean they should be very self reliant self reliant clean and he talked of a village ideal village should have you know their own prayer houses where every covid everybody can pray they must have their own you can say community wells where people can collect water that means he was also a thinking of a situation where there is no caste class differences so people coming together and then the village must produce for their own needs they must not be dependent on others they must develop their own needs today in the time of pandemic crisis again when we see the migrant workers you know coming back you can realize what has happened to the development paradigm what the, the present development paradigm has done it has created dependency there is not enough to you know sustain the villages so people are going out to the cities to work and then they come back uh, during crisis so this it should it could have been the other way around take with if if we had followed mahatma gandhi so uh, and and he also was a person who was very frugal himself but then he also wanted that these villages the houses for example they should be built with materials which can be collected within a radius of 8 miles or you can say around 15 kilometers of that area whatever you get with with that material you build your house so it is something very very different that we are doing today people are building houses you know palatial houses you know taking marble you know if possible from italy so he is not that person who tried to do that even in terms of food habits he was very frugal and he said that you should have local food in this time of pandemic we all realize that you know local food is good for your health you know what is produced locally what is found locally we should have that so there are so many you know it is almost limitless you know things that is said they are so very uh, you can say comprehensive and uh, there are so many things that is said that you can we can take one at a time and find the relevance of it and many things that is said they are actually uh, they are really, you know not only relevant they are actually an alternative and i would say there that is the alternative in many cases if we want to change the trajectory if we change the you know the type of restlessness we are living with the type of you know very very unsustainable in imbalanced life that we are having then i think gandhi's way will be the right way so anyway uh So I think I, I have consumed more time. No, it's okay. It's okay, sir. Uh, I'll 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 just sum up. Okay, sir. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so anyway, yes, no, actually, actually, the problem is, uh, you know, the topic is quite wide. That is also true. But then the Mahatma Gandhi himself, there are you know so many things that can be said about him, and on these days especially. So. i have talked a lot uh, therefore about you know the environmental ethics the the type of environmental crisis that we are facing today could have been avoided or we can avoid that by using gandhian means gandhian means will be very very important gandhi therefore has remained an inspiration 
to all of us, an inspiration for environmentalists, an inspiration for political leaders like Martin Luther King, Solidarity Movement, as I have already said, and in India, Vinod Ahave, Kumarappa, all these persons are there. So, Gandhi, in in the in the present circumstances in this modern world, will remain will remain a very, very viable alternative. And the, and the symbolisms that we are only resorting to by having uh, a, something like Swach Bharat Abhija, or maybe, you know, taking one bit at a time, or, you know, putting on a Gandhi cap. You know, these symbolisms won't do, actually. If we are to really realize, or if you if you, if you want to really come out of the crisis by using Gandhian model, we have to do something more. We have to do something more. So morality in politics, the 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 very sense that you know uh, means is as important as the end. You have to take good means to get to the good end. But this morality is very important. So the takeaway is the takeaway is in today's world. Uh, Gandhi's relevance can never be denied. Number one, his very mode of struggle, which will remain to inspire, you know, in years to come. And Gandhi, you know, dead is becoming even stronger. He is becoming more and more popular in a way. He is becoming more and more relevant. So his mode of struggle, you know, that a paradigm shift has happened actually in the world after his coming after his mode of struggle came, that, you know, even the poorest of poor, they can come, uh, they can, they can have a tool, they have a tool actually, to fight back, or to, uh, you can say, at least address their grievance. Then, uh, the, the environmental ethic that he actually pro professed, the world has enough for everyone needs but not enough for everyone's greed is something actually that exemplifies everything. You know that we have to control our wants, which is very important. We are not controlling our wants. Modern society is actually in a way increasing wants. We have to actually decrease our wants. Simple living, high thinking. And then all the time we have to think about the most relevant part is also uh, is idea about the antodaya. We have to think about the last man in the society, the most marginalized people in the society, and do something about that. In the NCRT textbooks, you will find there is a Gandhi talisman, and that is the talisman we should all take, uh, always wear with us. You know, if you are feeling bad, if you're in a pensive mood, you have to remember, you remember the face of the you know poorest of poor person, and you think how the action that you are taking is going to change the life of the person. So this is something which we actually need to understand. And uh, Gandhi's relevance, therefore, was there, is there, and will remain. And this has come out, you know, even more prominently in the new education policy or national education policy in 2020. As I have said, he is a person who actually brought out all the, you know, different shortcomings of the British policy, of the, of the British education policy, or the colonial education policy, and what we should do. Had we followed Gandhi's Naya Talim, or his idea of higher education, or vocationalization of education, perhaps we would have been in a better place today. But still, we have Mahatma Gandhi still with us. If he is not there physically, at least he is there with us in a lot of other ways. In his, in his ideas, in his beliefs, in his morality. And this is something which will actually inspire all of us in days to come. And we have all, uh, it is necessity, it is the call of the time that we all come together and actually try to profess whatever we can of Gandhi and try to, try to resist, try to resist those forces who actually Kill Gandhi, the ideas, the idea which actually inspired a person to kill, to kill, to assassinate our.
or father of the nation is the idea that we should all fight tooth and nail. And that is the idea that we should defeat. So with these words, actually, on this very auspicious day of Gandhi Jayanti, I wish all of you well. And I wish and I bow my head to, the, to this great uh, father of the nation. And uh, I thank St. John's College for organizing this and giving me the opportunity to speak a few words. I think I took enough time. I thank you all for your patience. Do I have been actually jumping around? Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, so actually, I am very sorry to admit the participants uh, because of my, I am not able to admit them because of my unstable you. network problem. Yes, sir. So now I give time to Ms. Kuhitilo for giving the board. So I have a question. Can I ask him? If you give me one minute. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Yes. yes. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I yeah. wanted to ask that uh, since it's been almost 73 years of independence, but yeah. we talk about Gandhi and his ideals and principles only on the 2nd of October. So how can his ideals and principles can be brought into the mainstream? And how uh, will this young generation be in? or how can they learn and move towards what he had uh, taught so many years back? Um, because I, I don't know how much uh, the young generation understands about the fight of the independence of today. So how can we bring his studies uh, into the mainstream of what we are studying uh, in history today? You see, uh, there is, I think, Gandhi for each one of us. I think you have a Gandhi that, uh, you know, you have your own Gandhi. Mukhtar will be having his own Gandhi. And Munna Bhai will be having his own Gandhi. Yes, sir. And, 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 and this Gandhi is there in, in popular form. Gandhi is there in the government circles. When they name a scheme, when they name a scheme or they, when they take a scheme, so Gandhi is there. Okay. Yes. And then there is also Gandhi in academic circles. I think Mukhtar, you have to uh, mute yourself, otherwise there is interference. Uh, anyway, so the, there, there is a Gandhi, you know, which is academic, which we talk about his philosophy, about his ideals. Then there, there is a Gandhi which is also being relieved in the in the sort of the movements that are there. You have, you know, there will be a dharna site and you will see that there is a image of Gandhi being taken. But in all of this, what you find is more symbolism. Now, when, uh, when, uh, what Mahatma Gandhi actually wanted is to actually do away with the dependency. Now, with the type of schemes, Antodaya schemes that we are having, whether it is in the, you know, you have the portion ma or whatever for nutrition and all. What is happening is that you are, there is a client patron relationship already in our, in our, in our country. And it is, the poor are becoming more and more dependent on the state. You know, they live on the doles or you can say on the, on the rice, which is given for free or at a very cheap price. So I think if Mahatma Gandhi would have been alive today, he would not have actually supported that type of you know, scheme, which is in fact creating dependency on the minds of the people. Now, what you have said is, uh, you know, to have, a, to have the lens to, to see all of this, uh, we need to uh, make Gandhi more, 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 you can say, understandable to the young people. And I think there are quite a lot of young people who are, in fact, studying Gandhi. It is not that they are also because they, they are our future. And I think without knowing Gandhi, without learning about Gandhi, the future is not there, actually. Because to each of these uh, problems that we are facing today in the modern society, if we look at the writings of the other writers, you have the, you can, what are the alternatives, alternatives that we are having? Are, you know, 
prior to you know gandhi's coming also we had the alternative of a communist country mainly the, the binary is between the communist and the capitalist but mahatma gandhi actually gave you know a middle way a middle path so to say he talked about cooperative cooperative society of trusteeship uh, he tried to you know bring a sort of uh, he was in some in some of his things you will find they are a bit socialistic in nature so he was and there, therefore he is a person who used to dine with with the birlas as well as the, uh, as well as with the untouchables so that is the type of inclusivity that he he brought in and in india which is you know thousands of years of you know stratification of the differences if you want to really make our future generation really you can say modern in the real sense without having you know uh, with all these uh, so to say uh, hierarchical thinking i think gandhi again becomes relevant so gandhi in a way i think uh, he is uh, a guide to action is a guide to action and uh, if i think it is also you know his simplicity today we are all becoming poorer our country is becoming poorer because of the pandemic also a lot of things are happening but then if you if you are a gandhian i think a, a true gandhian will never be actually perturbed by this situation because he is a person who will be simple living he will not he will be not having too much of wants and that is why he will be happy he will be living in connect with the society and with the environment that he is living in and so i think in that way also if you look at gandhi he is relevant and i think students can definitely follow that and we in academia even we have a you know some part of our syllabus for example in history we have uh, we study gandhi in some ways but i think we need to organize more academic sessions on gandhi wherever possible and even during those classes we can actually give them the all the sources that we have which they can actually study and know more about gandhi so thank you avirupa for your you. for your question thank you sir okay uh, so if can we have more question or if not then uh, i can give time to ms kubethilo for giving the word of thanks sir can i ask one more question yes yes sure sure yeah. Uh, like um, Gandhi's principle is mostly uh, there in the Constitution as directive principles. It is not uh, uh, binding upon the state to, uh, you know, to follow his principles or ideals. So, how will our country in future, maybe? present uh, move towards uh, that kind of gandhian principles or ideals when his principles and ideals are not made mandatory but just made as a directive principles for the state to adopt so how can uh, this kind of change be brought in the governance because in spite of him advocating about untouchability growth of the society from below we see that every day some kind of issues are coming like the recent issue we have seen in hatras about a dalit girl so how will the governance um, how can the normal uh, people or the masses bring a change to the governance that we are facing today no uh, that is a very difficult question in the sense that perhaps it is only mahatma gandhi who could have answered that yes. uh, so because uh, he never i don't know there are you know sometimes uh, even in the case of munna bhai uh, yes uh, you know and, and his idea of gandhi giri and there you will find that you know gandhi was being brought in at a different time where he sees it all the things which are happening uh, from a different perspective so uh, what is uh, you know today today if gandhi would have been here what you have what could have been his reaction is very difficult to say is very difficult to say but uh, you know 
his ideas because you see he died even before the constitution was promulgated yes sir. even he died even before that he did not live long enough to even see the constitution yes. his take on the constitution would have would really would have been very very crucial actually i think so but he was not there he was not there and whatever we have we take it to be gandhi's you know his views but then if you look at all his writings uh, if you look at you know uh, whatever he said you know through his writings through his even it through his life you know i don't think it is there in toto or in, you can say uh, comprehensively enough but as i said it is a guide to action what is said about communal harmony is something at least uh, you know on this uh, on this 150 50th year of his birth in jandi jayanti we should have been able to at least you know uh, at least you know establish them at least by this time yes. but that did, but that did not happen what has happened it is you know it has there is a reversal in fact there is more of uh, communal hatred today than it was there mm-hmm. there, there was ever before so uh, in that sense gandhi has not become irrelevant rather he has become more relevant yes. he has become more relevant because uh, in history with the with with our help of you know very long temporal uh, uh, you know timeline that we study uh, we know that illu- the illusion of permanence is broken we history helps us to break that and we know india as a country has survived uh, throughout the ages in different ways there were many empires and the empires did not succeed empires got fragmented again and then there were again another empire coming up yes it has happened it is a course of history and sometimes it takes 100 years sometimes it takes even more 200 years or so who who knew that you know the british would have left india people who lived under the british you know two three generations at least you know they 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 were all born and brought up and then they died during the british rule today also in other similar situation what i'm trying to say is that the the connectedness in india the 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 very india that the father of the nation actually dreamt of is the india which will survive is the india which will actually if it is to remain united integrated and stay like that for years to come that is the india that mahatma gandhi is you know pluralistic celebrating diversity india that should be actually restored that we should all work for any other india you know the especially the india that we are having Uh, at the present moment which is not all good there are so much of communalism this is a india which is a sure path to destruction and uh, as historians we can only say that history repeats itself and who knows in days to come it is 70 years maybe in another 70 years this india will not be there if it is you know so polarized in terms of uh, caste or religion is that okay Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, do you have any questions, participants? Okay. Then, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for your for enlightening us with the different concept of. Mahatma Gandhi's teachings and ideas.